Hi again. I had some requests to have a look at drillings, so I went into the vault and uh, recovered a drilling. And before I go into the firearm, I just thought I'd mention gun collecting is interesting in a number of ways, but one of the most interesting things about it is one can go deeper and deeper into collecting. And what I'm about to tell you about drillings may or may not be surprising to some of you, but this particular firearm um, was made either in 1910, 1912, or 1916. I haven't been able to determine exactly when. Maybe one of you will have a better idea. In any event, um, you can have a look at how this firearm was uh, sold. So you can see a case. Uh, typically, there will be the maker's name here. That is not the case right now. Uh, probably because this is a replacement case. Um, in any event, this is a drilling. It's a J.P. Zauer drilling. And each part of the firearm comes in a compartment. And obviously, whoever ordered this drilling years ago um, w probably wanted the, the best product that was available at the time. And as you'll see as we go through what they accomplished back in let's say 1910, 12, or 16. It's really something else. So we start out with um, what you're familiar with. I mean, this could be a, a double shotgun, except that it also has a rifle. And you have to bear in mind at that time, and even now in Europe, there's an opportunity um, to hunt different types of game at the same time. So you might encounter a deer, you might encounter a wild boar, um, or um, upland game birds of different kinds and so the concept was that you would have fire one firearm to accomplish all these tasks and uh, before I assemble this firearm you can see that it has double triggers and the double triggers activate the firing pins for the for the double shotgun and then here it has a side lever and this side lever um, actually activates the single shot rifle and you can see the third firing pin here. And um, so you, you have instantly uh, a, a shotgun, or I suppose if you wanted to have a slug in one of the barrels, you, you could have a slug shotgun, uh, another barrel was shot, and then another barrel that's a rifle barrel. And um, we'll just go ahead and assemble this now. So, and it's a little tricky to film, but anyway, the, all the parts are fitted perfectly. And like I said at the beginning, it's a J.P. Zauer. And even though it was made so long ago, it locks up perfectly. Uh, there's no, no give in anything. And that clicks into place. So now, now you're ready to go. Um, you have a sight here on the barrels that would be for the rifle barrel. And I'll give you a muzzle view. And the caliber is 9.3 by 72 R. Some of you may be familiar with 9.3 by 74 R. Uh, this, the 74 R is far more powerful than the 72 R, uh, which is right here on the table. Um, I have an old box of RWS ammunition. I'm not sure if it's loaded still. It might be, but in any event, it is around, and I have loading dies for it. It's it's a mild round. I don't know if I would shoot over 200 meters with it, but still, I think, fairly common. And you'll see a lot of drillings in 9.3 by 72R, 19.3 by 74R, 7 by 65R, 8 by 57R. And the R, of course, designates the rimmed round. And um, if I'll just open the action, and you can see that in order to extract the rounds, there has to be a rim, much like a shot shell. Oh, and of course, um, this comes with snap caps, so these are not short shot shells, but if you wanted to dry fire um, to prevent, potentially prevent the breakage of firing pins, they provided snap caps, so there are two of them. And um, in any event, you can you can see the, the uh, shotgun and then the rifle. I won't, these are live rounds. Normally I make a dummy for filming. 
but I didn't bother for this video. So you can see they're kind of unique looking pencil shaped rounds at very low pressure. Uh, not that the action is weak, the action is actually quite robust. But um, you know, a lot of the hunting in Europe is done from tree stands and at controlled ranges. So there's no need for um, that much power or even a flat trajectory. So now we've assembled the, the drilling. And uh, of course you have a selector at the back, um, which is not unusual. And then um, you actually have a hand fitted um, aperture sight that falls out of the tang. And I mean, the workmanship is hard to describe unless you have a chance to examine this in hand. The side locks are engraved and some of you may know what a side lock is. Um, in, in simple form, the mechanism that causes the, um, fi the firing pin to be uh, moved forward uh, is accomplished by a hammer and that's either in a side lock or in a box lock. And I set out a box lock shotgun over here <coughs> so you could see what a box lock looks like. And you can see that the box lock action ends uh, much sooner than the side lock. So the uh, hammers are in here. And that's a uh, William Evans, um, actually that's a Webley and Scott, uh, but it was sold by William Evans in London. And anyway, getting back to the drilling, which is a side lock. So the entire mechanism is in the side, side plates. These are removable and um, they're easily maintained and they're quite elegant when you take any of these side locks apart um, it, it's a, it's quite a something to look at what they came up with anyhow adjustable aperture sight and, and they even have knurling on here I mean this would have taken a craftsman hours to fit into the stock you can see how carefully the stock is is fitted around the side locks and around the action um, in this case, it's a double trigger, and then, as I said, um, for the for the rifle, you depress this lever, and now the rear trigger will fire the rifle barrel, and I'll just fire it, and that would be um, your your center fire rifle shot. So uh, we'll put the aperture sight back into the stock, and now it's gone. Now you're back to a shotgun unless you wanted to use the typical rear sight, which, if you want it gone, folds flat. These are scope mounts for the claw-mounted scope, which we'll get to in a moment. And at the back of the stock is a, is a uh, trap door, and in the trap door you can keep rifle cartridges. So if you need to reload um, quickly, there, or you just don't want to carry around a bunch of cartridges um, that's sufficient. I noticed also this particular one has a, a screwdriver I guess for tightening things in case you needed to tighten something so it's stored in there. Sling swivels uh, which you're all familiar with. Uh, replacement recoil pad, the original one I'm sure deteriorated. They were often made out of natural rubbers back then. Um, and it's engraved, <clears throat> it has a serial number, and I tried to track the um, uh, date of manufacture through that serial number, but the records are conflicting, and I don't have a source for the origin of this particular drilling. And then finally, uh, we arrive at what I think is kind of amazing. Bearing in mind when the drilling was made, this size scope, uh, it looks like 30 millimeters to me. It's a variable power. You just move this lever. And I don't know if you can hear it clicking. And it goes from 2 uh, to 6, I think. But it works fine, and the glass is clear. And then you can lock it in place by turning this um, neural knob. And then focus is like any other scope at the back. So if you think about it, back in 1910 or 20 or even 30, it doesn't really matter. And then to use the scope, you simply click it in place, and now you have a perfectly functional 
rifle with a scope and with a variable scope. Um, I think that's pretty amazing stuff uh, that they that they were able to do this. And um, I'm sure that one craftsman or maybe several dedicated a whole lot of time to create one, what really is a work of art. And then to remove the scope, you simply move this back. It's, it's gone. You could, you could have it in your case up in a tree stand or somewhere. And then when you're finished hunting, you simply release the forend. You know this part from your double shotguns and over and unders. And uh, I, you know, when I bought it, I, of course you check the bores. And typically people who buy something like this take care of what they have. And the rifle barrel is like new. It has quite unique rifling. I don't have a way to show it to you. It may be Henry rifling, but I'm not an expert on rifling. It's quite unique. In any event, the rifling is like new and so are the bores. And then in the case, it came with the typical cleaning rod. And it came with the, sl the original sling, actually. And the cleaning jags, which fit onto the cleaning rod. So you can see, uh, I mean, Arguably, you would need one firearm. Uh, is it heavy? Not particularly, because they scalloped as much they could as they could to remove weight. So you have two 16-gauge um, shots instantly, uh, and then a 7.62, sorry, uh, 9.3 by 72R rifle barrel. Um, at your disposal instantly. So, yeah, somebody wanted to see a drilling. I thought I would wait and show you one that is really exceptional. And these drillings, uh, you would think, are only antiques. If you come across something like this and it's reasonably priced, you've heard me say this before about others, uh, just buy them. These are works of art and uh, can only go up in value as the value of human labor um, becomes worthless because of machines. Uh, also, I wanted to mention, there are some gun makers in Fairlach. I know some of them, Peter Hofer, uh, Ludwig Borovnik, and um, uh, I'm trying to remember some of the other ones. Uh, anyway, there's a guild in Fairlach that, that uh, makes drillings, and actually they make them even more complex. Some of them have a 22 barrel in, in the middle here. So you have a rifle and two shotguns, or, or two, sh two shotgun barrels and a rim fire, a center fire, or even two center fires. There's almost an unlimited uh, variety of combinations that are available. But of course, you're going to be paying, uh, you know, 10 or 20 grand. And the name I couldn't remember a moment ago was uh, Fansoy uh, there in Fairlach. I'm sure if you Google uh, Fairlach, Austria, and drillings, um, you'll get all those names and more. And they still have customers because people like these. They're uh, classic firearms and quite unique in what they can do. So I hope uh, those of you who wanted a drilling video, there, there you have it. This is the best one I have and maybe for its time the best firearm available. Uh, if you think about what was being manufactured in other parts of the world um, after the turn of the century and compare it with this, a variable power scope that's quickly removable, uh, everything fits perfectly and still works perfectly after all that time. Uh, it's a real accomplishment. And uh, if you look up the ballistics for this round, you may think it's weak, but it's actually one of my favorite rounds. Uh, it isn't always necessary to use, um, you know, magnum power. Naturally, this won't work at 700 yards. Anyhow, there you have it, a drilling video. Thanks for watching.